Um, that was the course that Magwa offers. Um, just completed that this last year and it was an awesome course. I'll do a quick plug for that piece. Um, this whole slideshow, this whole story is about us, what we went through and making the decision to build in-house. There's so many great vendors and it seems like we, we had a, I'll dive into it a little bit, but it was a decision, it was a tricky one, so here we go. So a real quick overview of our old website. It was 18 years old. Um, I think it's, the, there's the bait there. It was either 21 it could drink or 18 it could smoke, one of the two. But um, it was cobbled together over time. It was flat HTML. There was some ASP apps that were built in, some cold fusion, different databases, including um, access databases powered the site, which was awesome. Um, and then we found out 10,000 plus pages kind of put the thing together. Probably a third, if not what, you know, those were the things people were actually hitting on. But when we actually ran scans and companies said, this is how much you owe us based on the number of pages, we were deleting really quickly. Um, three editors, including myself and Alan, who's in the room, uh, we were the ones. So people needed updates made on the site, they would come to us. So periods, uh, sentences, images, database backend stuff, it was us. And that most of that content was static. So of the you know, 10,000 plus pages, there was tons of static content, most from 2003. You know, th there was just a lot of content that was really dated on the website. And that just kind of shows you, I thought that was the most Colorado way I could show you what a cobbled together website looks like. Maybe it doesn't look that clicky. I'll just do this. So why are we build? Um, going into this thing, we it, we've gone so long. You know, we could do little little fixes here and there, but why just tear the whole thing down and start from scratch? Well, we knew it was on old and unsupported, un, 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 old unsupported infrastructure. So we were in cold fusion. We were continually just trying to push that can down the road. Um, they were the databases. We had to go through a whole uh, upgrade of the database systems, and that was something that was very painful. And then a lot of the old code was starting to be depreciated. It was complex because, like I mentioned, we had ASP, Cold Fusion, and to the user, they didn't see any difference. They'd log in and it would have the ASP or Cold Fusion. But for all the development that we had to do, just to keep mindful of all the patching, the you know the code code that broke over time, and then. It was definitely not mobile friendly, so there was no such thing. It was there'd be no way to do it all at once with those ten thousand pages, and not friendly period for us, the editors or the the people that were making the requests, um, because there was something that needed to be done. They had to find us. You know, they had to send us email, give us a call, um, or send us a ticket, which of course they did, and not accessible. So when they came to us, we had a group come through and. They say, okay, your website, we're going to do a scan for accessibility. And we're like, oh, this is going to be awesome. This is going to be really bad. Um, and it was when we first did it on our old site. There was a lot to be fixed. So all those things just kept adding up. Also, of course, the static HTML and the three editors. So that's the why. Um, that diagram, start with the why. I don't know if you've ever read the book. It's a really good one. Um, it, it will inspire you to do these, these crazy things. So the decisions, and this is just a quote I found. You know, if no one comes from the future to stop you from doing it, then how bad of a decision can it really be? Um, there was a lot of decisions that went into this thing. Like, OK, do we build it ourselves? Do we go out and purchase this? What tools do we use? Do we host in the cloud? What's our back end? How, how, are we going to let the editors touch it? Are we going to you know, force them to go through some approval process to get content on the web? There were so many things just to think through, um, and I'll just kind of touch on some of those as, as we, they approached. So the bill versus buy for us, um, there's some things I wanted to throw out there that um, these are like the, the uh, folk tales, I guess, of build versus buy. So if you go out and you build something, it's not always going to be cheaper. It's easy to go buy something or use a, a Google Sites, but you're never going to have as much control over it. Um, you're not going to be able to do everything that you need to on the site. There'll always be, you might get that 80% right out of the gate, 
but you'll be missing those little little pieces that you, you're 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 lacking. I guess. And buying is not always easier. We you find that you make the purchase on something big, and we've done this with with tools, and then they hand you that the manuals and the APIs, and they say here do this, and the things that the salesperson said it didn't work out the way that you know they promised. And in our in our uh, case, it was a blend of both. We built our site, we hosted on a third party, um, and then we use a lot of tools to kind of fill the need of what, what we wanted it to do. And why did we decide to build? Well, it turns out the team that we had, um, they, were, they wanted to get their hands dirty. They wanted to get in there and make the changes and own it, and our leadership was behind us. So that's why we, we made the decision to do it. That doesn't, it doesn't fit every single person and every single organization. But that's kind of what we went through when we were putting this together. Okay, the features. Um, this is where you look back at that why. It's like, why are we going through all this pain and why are we doing this? We knew we wanted to, to get some of that editing out to the departments or the, the stakeholders. Uh, we definitely needed a mobile-friendly site because that's where, you, if you watch those analytics, um, it's not everyone, you know, people bang, your, bang you over the head with like everyone's going mobile and it's not true. You have a lot of people in the office, you have realtors and, and uh, other groups that they use their desktop. But we still had a pretty big group of citizens that that's where they were. They didn't own a computer, they just used their phone. Um, accessible, that's just the right thing to do. We'll talk, I mean, there's people that will tell you the laws, they'll tell you this is what you're going to get hit with. They're going to run scans on you. You're going to get sued. But at the same time, you've got, in your group of citizens, there's people that can't use your site if you don't make it accessible. And that's bad. Um, so making it clean and usable was a big deal for us. Data driven. Um, all these I'll touch on a little bit more. Good search, which I found out was a lot harder than I first expected. And a lot more important than I expected because a lot of people are Google minded. You ask them a question and my wife will tell you that I'm I'm Googling it right away, even to her chagrin. Um, and then also the ability to limit the technical debt. So when you make a decision, like it looks great today, but event it's always gonna have age. It's always gonna start to rust on you as a website. So what can you do to make sure that you're, you're continually looking at the infrastructure, that it's not gonna fall apart, or it's not gonna become inoperable, or it's not gonna lose its ability to service you or the citizens? So, one of our first decisions, well, we're gonna pick a CMS, why do we pick Drupal? Um, is there anybody else in the class, the session that uses Drupal besides Al? No? All right, so this is what, where we went with it. Um, yes, it's open source. Um, yes, there, there's not a cost to install it and to run it. Um, it was a flexible platform. You know, we put it in place and then we could use modules or we could code things that, to add to it, to make it our own. Um, it's also secure. There's, a, there's always alerts for Drupal and other open source, but they're really good about posting those. And with our hosting platform, and I'll, I'll go into that in a minute, it's easy to put that in place. So they'll let us know and they'll patch our Drupal system before I ever find out from our security guy, Tom. Tom comes knocking on the door and he says, hey, did you hear? Drupal's unsecure. And I'm like, yeah, it's already done. And I look like a hero. So it's used a lot in government. Um, a couple examples of NASA and, and, and Georgia. Was it an easy choice? Oh, I guess I should start the next one. Uh, vibrant developer community. There, I can't even tell you how many times that I've gone out in search of something and I have people telling me the answer. They're from overseas. They're from across, you know, different county right adjacent to us. There's a lot of people that are engaged in Drupal and it's easy to find answers. There's a lot of vendors that support it, site improve. We've built a lot of hooks into Site Improve. Um, and then we've done a lot with some single sign-on as well. So, and it was an easy choice, absolutely not. Um, our software developers, they are, uh, they're big into Angular. So when we were making a choice, we're like, we really wanna make our tool Angular based or some form of NoSQL or some form of all the cool latest, greatest stuff that you hear in the development space. But finding a, a CMS that did what we wanted it to and that we could set up and not do it everything on our own, it was impossible. So that's why we went with Drupal. We went with Drupal 7, which is another trick, you know, because 
we had this moment in time where we had to decide between Drupal 8 versus Drupal 7. And we would go to the conference, this conference, and talk to the vendors that knew their Drupal inside and out. And they're like, don't do Drupal 8 yet. So the minute we made the decision, we came to the conference and they're like, hey, go ahead, let's do Drupal. So we're like, we just, we just launched, we just got it done. This was last year. But I was glad we made the decision because there are a lot of things that are still, they're always gonna be in the rears. So your modules or your interactions, um, so we're okay. Uh, we'll, we'll eventually make that decision later to make the jump. So where to host? This is, this is going to be a tricky one for you as well. Um, if you're already using a third party, um, your IT management, your CIO, he's totally fine with your website just living off wherever it does, as long as it does what it needs to for the citizen. But if well, you're in our boat, we had everything hosted internally. They felt really good that it was secure in our network. Uh, we had it hitting our databases directly. So we didn't ever have any trouble with like, getting the data that we needed or uh, interacting with other applications. But our shop is Microsoft. So when I walk through the door and I say, we're going to do an open source, Linux-based tool, our server team was like, that's great, but no. We're, we're not going to do that. Um, but they were great. They, what we ended up doing was we built this hybrid system where we have data on servers inside the firewall, and we have our website outside. And I'll go through that in a minute as well. But which vendor? That's another trick because I wanted to see if Acqui or Pantheon were here because I want to make sure I am nice to both of them, but Pantheon is awesome. Uh, Acqui is a great vendor, but for what we were doing for the dev team that we had, uh, Pantheon just had a ton of great, um, great features. Again, this came down to the team, what features, uh, the cost of the solution. Uh, Pantheon was a cheaper option, but it also was more robust. Um, we had a, I'll show you what we got just by turning the key. So this is our environment. So after four months, so it didn't, it took us a while to make the decision what we were going to build on and where we we're going to put this thing. So turning on, turning the key, we got multi-dev, which means we had development, test, production, all in one space. We use Git. We use a, a repo to push our code up through the system. So we can see it on our desktop, and then we hit, you know, we use git push. We see it in the test environment. We deploy. So it's, it's all seamless when you, when you have the right hosting environment. So that was a nice piece for us. Um, they're always continually tracking the security and pushing those things out, like I said. And they gave us things like uh, HTTPS, which was a big deal for us because before we were not, we were collecting data and I'm in the least secure possible manner, but we are now 100% in a HTTPS environment. Um, and so far we've had great support through those guys. There is one hiccup, which I will mention later, but that was it. And, and New Relic, is anyone familiar with New Relic for monitoring? Awesome. They're an awesome, tool, an awesome organization. We get it for free with Pantheon. So that was a nice benefit because we could, they're continually watching the health of all of our, our systems, our web, database, backends, but they're also, they let you put in URLs that you can continually ping and that comes in handy when, you're, when you have data that you're feeding up to your website. So I can watch sheriff information or the assessor's information and make sure that it's available so that when my site down, goes down, I know where, where it's breaking. So did we build this whole thing? Like, do we take people's specs and go run off into a clock, like go hide somewhere? And, um, you know, then come back like months later and say, here you go. You know, we did not. We, um, we built it. We said, we're gonna do it. Right when we turned the key, we threw a domain on it. And everything we did, um, people could see what we were doing, which was great because we had all the departments right away telling us, that doesn't look right, this is great. We also, ha it gave us the ability to bring editors in really early to work on features, functionality, and what they needed to do. So I would just recommend if you guys do it, no matter if you're hosted or not, to do everything out, find a new URL, and just build it in real time. Um, so what to move is the, ne the next big decision, and Never let it go like this where the department says, I'm not going to worry about it. The web's just going to take all my stuff up and box it up and take it over to the new site and just dump it all out. And then none of it makes any sense. And it's just a terrible way to go. So like I said early on, we had that future.larimer.org online. 
and we started engaging editors. And it wasn't everybody at once. We went with HR, we went with the sheriff, because they were engaged. They were hungry to get, get on the tool and get their content online. And we used analytics a lot. So a couple things, like I said, we had 10,000 pages, and we had departments that said, just bring it all over. It's really nice to have analytics tell you that no one has visited a page for years, so you can just start stripping away. And then it's also important when uh, you have a lot of redirects. So when you launch a site that has .cfm, .asp, forward slash, every number under the sun, then it's really important to have a redirect for those really important pages. So Al took that on, and he went through probably, I don't know, 100 or so, just to kind of start adding redirects to our Drupal site. So then when we flipped the switch, if somebody came in looking for uh, a certain form, they were redirected to the right spot. And then when we, we kept watching it so that we'd notice when one, you know, a lot of 404 errors hit, that we could start re doing redirects. So that was a big piece of changing over there. And then gauge content's importance. When you had a department that said, we are the most important page on your entire site, and you tell them, well, you've had 10 people hit your site the last month, then you know that you can, you can at least guide them. But there is a caveat on that, and I may mention it, I'll, I'll let you know, but HR, for some reason, no one was seeing their jobs. So we decided, well, let's just add your button up here into the, in the fold. And they started getting hit like crazy, which is excellent because we had a big demand for, for people. So that shows you that even though it's, you know, placement is everything, but you also have to be, use analytics to help you really key in on good content. So a note on editors, not, ed not all editors are the same. Like I said, the HR and Sheriff Department, they were in there. They were helping us do the HTML, doing image, and I had one editor that she came to one of our first training sessions and she just sat there like this the whole time. Really happy to be there. And after, you know, sitting with her one-on-one, -on -one, she was just very nervous about it because she'd been so used to just throwing it in a Word document and sending it to us. Um, and we said, we will still do that. We're still going to get the ticket, but we want to give you the ability to log in and do it yourself. And now she's in there all the time. She's comfortable. She has no problem breaking the website and calling us because she's excited to do it, you know, it's, which is what you want. Uh, when you're doing that training, food is huge. So get everybody in the room, throw pizza out, and you'll be surprised how many people show up for training when you just say there's pizza involved. I'll just put that down. But I will put another note there. It's also funny, fun to show off your new tools. We had a food inspection. We support the restaurant inspections. So we mentioned that right when everyone was like digging in. I said, oh, let's check and see what their, you know, what their dings are. And they, they weren't. We just wanted to scare everybody. So that was good. Uh, meet them in person, like I said. Uh, meeting with the finance department in person meant everything to them. Just going through it, letting them know, giving them a space online where they can break it and try things out be without it being published was a big deal. Uh, and then encourage the feedback. I'll show you we have a feedback button on our website on every single page for citizens or employees. It just lets them know that we're always listening and we answer everything in real time on the website. So it's not like it goes to our email and then we're bouncing it back. We have some really choice emails out there that came through early on. So those are out there for everyone to see as well. So complete transparency. Um, and then listen, that one's a no brainer. But then sell Murray on the new chair. So I don't know if anyone's seen the Goldbergs, which is an awesome 1980s show. So Murray is a, um, He's the dad, he's the patriarch. He's also a furniture salesman. And he has an old beat up chair. So he has had this forever and they will, they've tried to like swap this chair out multiple times and it, there's no having it. Well, when you have a process in place that's 17 years old of people just sending you stuff, you have to sell them on this new thing. And it's not gonna be comfortable, but you have to give that guidance and make them comfortable and let them see the value in it. So you're going to be stuck selling Murray a new chair whenever you make a big change. Okay, so what about all the apps? Like I said, there was Cold Fusion, there was ASP. I think there was other things that I didn't even know what it was, but it was out on our website and it was doing something. So most of the apps were easy to bring inside to Drupal. Um, and some we rebuilt uh, using Angular, but it sat on our Drupal site. But some had to stay because there were these big complex apps. And if we tried to take them on as part of the web project, 
it was going to drown. It was going to just ground us to a halt. We'd be focusing. We, we tried one of them, and it did. It, it prolonged the project by about two months. And we were really trying to hit a certain deadline. So building up apps.larimer.org, putting a look and feel on there, and then people could get to those old apps. And we're not talking a lot. We're talking six big apps. And then later on, making the plan to say, we're going to rebuild this, and we're going to host it here or there. But just, just having a plan for your applications so they're going to stay online, they're not going to stop doing their job, that was a big deal. Um, and then also, when we started building Angular apps, like I said, we had a lot of data that sat in our, behind our firewall. And we used this apps.larimer.org to create APIs, to pass data off to our public-facing website. So that was how we did it. Um, I'm sure there's other ways, but that worked really well for us because we had some secure place, some secure server. We still had control over it, but that's how we were passing data. Okay, notes on email. This is a big deal as well. Uh, before, we had notifications being sent from our web server. Uh, with the new system, we use MailChimp and Mandrill. Um, each email, we can track if it hit right, if it landed in the right inbox. Um, we can review any errors that were made because we had a lot of people signed up for different things and it turned out half of those people no longer had that email address and we were still sending it day after day and our web inbox was getting all those kickbacks and we would slowly try and churn through and delete things but there were so many bad things happening with email without doing something with a tool like you know using uh, MailChimp for newsletters and Mandrill for just sending out you know, on-demand content. Uh, this is the historical photo of email queue back in Larimer County before we did this. So what would happen is someone would say, 2,000 people need to know about this, you know, sale that's going on, our farmer's market. And 2,000 people would get an email from our web server and our queue. From that point on, it was first in, first out. So anybody else sending something really important, they would be the last of the list. Like, Al had a really nice um, time fighting to get through the storm one day sat down at his desk, I don't know, probably around 8, and he, that's when he got the email from that we closed the, we closed the building because there was a blizzard and sent out like, I don't know, 435. So there's a lot to be said with email and communication, especially when it's coming from the web. So now here's a little quick pick of our environment. You can see I've added Angular there on the top. That's where we have some data-driven apps. That apps.larimer.org where we're pumping not only our old, a couple old applications, but we have these data feeds. Our email services are online, and it's all built in the cloud, except for apps.larimer.org. Okay, so September 5th, 2017, we launch it, we throw it up, we're happy. Unexpected things will happen when you turn the key. Um, so yeah, there were some broken things, the redirects, you know, was key for us, having the 100 ready to go. Um, we used a tool within Drupal to keep track of 404s as they happen. Um, HTTPS broke really badly. So when a vendor does tell you, and they're like, yeah, it takes five minutes to propagate, and you do it at 3 AM, and nothing. So then you know you have to make that drive into the office, and people are going to ask you, why is it that our website says it's not secure? Like, I go to the website, and it comes up with big red blaring sign that says do not go here to the website and that's like day one um the big big piece and then i'll say i'll just throw this in the too we did miss an entire department that was so quiet it was um who am i thinking of <sighs> now i'm doing it again uh no so so they're a very a very small department with like two or three people they deal with foreclosures al yeah so this apartment, they, they never said anything. We kept sending out emails to the countywide, all this thing, and then they came in very meekly and said, oh, by the way, could we have a little bit of space on your website? And we're like, oh my gosh. So that was another bit. The broken HTTPS, this is where it was really important to include a lot of people early on and to have commissioners kicking the tires and departments adding content and trying things out on future.larimer because they're part of the team. And they want to see everyone succeed. Rather than us build something and give it to them, you want them to build it with you? Trust. Yes. There we go. No one shall say anything. That was a test. Um, no, so it's really important to include your target audience, especially those 
they are really going to drive your content. They're going to drive people to the website. The last thing you want is for them to be frustrated day one. You want it's it's a team effort. So getting them involved and getting them to do it with you is a big deal. So and that's where this partnership comes in, right? You want to be that when you launch, everyone should hopefully be excited back with you. The commissioner came in. He uh, who's you know our, our leadership and gave us hell for that security issue but he was doing it in jest he was happy we were still the ha way happier to have it online versus not so so share your legacy one of the things we did which would be another trick is we left the old website online we left legacy.larimer.org and it's still online right now not that it's getting hits but it was really for two things one it's for all the things we forgot but then also when people said, hey, I really like the way this thing used to work, and they, don't, they want to see it again, you can say, here you go. Go there, kick the tires, look at how it works. And it also gave us just some insight into how people were using the old site. Um, we could keep it and look at it. Um, it was really just to say, hey, here's the old site. If you want to still use it, it's online. And we've kept it up for a while. It's a minimal cost thing. Not a lot of people use it, but it's online. Okay, so put. No, it's locked. There's a little banner. No, no, no. Yeah. There are some things that get pushed out there, like some of our automated applications that are updating both places because it's the data that drives that. But as far as content and pages, there's a banner that says this is the old site. Click here to go to the new site. But it's more a museum of web than anything else for us. Post launch, we now had 60 editors. It did introduce quality issues. And the accessibility goals, they were seemed out of reach for us. Because we built it, and we're like, man, this is really good. We're getting really good accessibility metrics. But as people started adding content or we changed things around, we really needed that solution. So we did engage Site Improve post-conference last year. And it was the world of difference. We do share all of our metrics of Site Improve online. We use their API. Um, so it's larimer.org forward slash accessibility. Um, and that way, we're just being true to ourselves. You can get to it in our footer. Um, and it tells what our scores are. Um, we still cannot break through that SEO, how fast your website. I think Google, you have to be as fast as Google to get that SEO. Plus, most of the county, they're not, I'm not too worried about SEO. If they find us, they're, they're going to find our website. Um, but it is something that you're, you tell the story of how your, your site's working. We're, we've done great on accessibility. Our quality is up. We're like 98% on quality. There's a lot of stuff that we pour time into, and we wanted to tell everyone about it. So we did put it online. And there is a, um, a little goodie at the end. If it, anyone's interested that is Site Improve customers, we have something that we could share. Um, the feedback, like I said, there's a feedback button on the top left corner. You click it, and then you can not only ask a question, but you can see all the other questions that have been asked before. That was a big deal for us because, one, it helps people see maybe they don't want to ask the same question again, but we're answering in real time. So we're responding and letting citizens, even employees, ask questions there. Um, if it's a, you know, how do I pay this or do this, we'll, we'll refer them. But again, it's, a, it's another place that kind of leads people back to the right area of the website. OK, this is the best. Um, your search is terrible. So right when we launch, one of those, a few of those feedback notes, and then a personal note from to the commissioner down through to us said, hey, our search, we are having trouble with our search. And it turned out someone went on our website and said, I'm building a shed, and I can't find um, utility shed on your website. I said, wow, OK, let's go find out what the, they want the specs for a utility shed. And I couldn't find utility shed on our website. Well, it turns out detached structure is the, the, the vernacular the planning department calls de you know, utility shed. So there was not one mention of it. And also, it was in a PDF that, wasn't, that was scanned. It was a copy. So that you couldn't even search it, even if you tried. So we were in trouble because unless we put a bunch of blinking arrows that pointed to the document that said, you know, utility shed or this is where it's at, and then it would pass on to our, our search tool, we had to figure out a new tool. Um, so we, at launch time, we built it in-house. It was on, on our site, on the uh, Pantheon suite, our hosting provider, and it was Apache Solar. So we just, we built our own search. We did our own indexing. 
but it didn't meet the need. You know, we got to where we we're like, ah, oh, you know, most people are finding their stuff, but they're not going to find utility shed or utility detached structure, I guess. So that's when we engaged Cluedo. And anyone that's thinking about, you know, they need the search, especially since Google left the market space. Google used to have the custom uh, search tool that they did, did it for you and they charge you a small fee and then they left and now you, then you started seeing ads showing up on your website. Cluedo is a good tool. Um, you can add page rank, all across there I'll just mention page rank, banners, quick links. So if someone does a search, you can make sure a certain page is top of the list. You can add a banner. Uh, we do this for the DMV because we don't support li driver's licenses. So if someone types in driver's license, right at the top it says, here's the state's website that you can go to. Um, Quick Link I don't use as much. That just takes you right to a, web a page. So if I type in something, it'll take you there without even showing you search results. And that, to me, wasn't helpful. But the misspelling and synonyms, again, you type in the wrong word. Um, for example, Linda Hoffman, who is our county manager, she has two N's in her name. So when I first started, the, so I'm like, look at this, Linda. Type in her name, what I thought was her name, and it doesn't show anything. I'm like, oh, let's do that again. That's, that was a problem. So Linda Hoffman now, alias is over Linda Hoffman. I'll show you there's a couple other aliases on there as well when I do a little test drive. So then our environment, this is kind of just, I'm just adding into this. We just added Cluedo Search. So that's where we are today. Um, so I'll do a demo after this, but there's one other thing to think about. And then, so this is a little um, picture of my youngest daughter, Gracie. She's two, this is probably a, a six, seven months ago uh, in the snow. But what I wanted to mention to you guys is there's a lot of people when you do a big change to your website, like it looks different, the, the utility of it's different, the paths are different. There's gonna be people that come to you and say, eh, it's not that great. There's this sentimentality about it because a lot of these people, they've got married, they've applied for their marriage license on there, they've, they've you know, booked passports, they've gone on these awesome trips. There's things they do on your website, they live on, you know, through your website. Um, there's also the employees that have been supporting these pages and this content for so long. So that when you yank, yank it from them, there's this detachment that takes place. Um, for us, one of the things that people loved is like the, the nature, the pictures of nature. You can go in, you can look. We have nature, awesome nature all around us, um, awesome parks. Just uh, we're surrounded, Colorado. But um, that's what we've tried to include. But no matter what you do, there's going to be this little thing. So there was this picture. This is just an idea that Gracie, when we put her bedroom together, we hung something up, right? And there's this one little thing that's like her nightlight shines up and it looks like her. It looks like her holding a kite or something. And it's this little piece of something that we never planned to be there. It's just this something that like, oh man, there's that shadow. Eventually, we're gonna tear that down. And it's gonna be something that we miss, even though it's something you never planned on. Um, it's just this piece of, of your experience. And that's gonna happen with people on the web. So just when you make those, there's little, little relationships people make with your website. So that's why I just thought I'd throw that in there at the end before I do my demo. So, come in here. Since it's about the CMS, I was gonna show you some of the editing features as well. But this is some of the site. I'll do a quick Cluedo search. Like I said, I can add an alias, so um, our, uh, our assessor's name is Steve Miller, which is awesome. Um, so if I type in Maurice, there's Steve Miller, the assessor, because I thought it's funny. That's a little Easter egg, but you can add a lot of different things in here. Like if I type in DMV, oh, not DMV, what am I looking for? I'm looking for a driver's license, but I'll add DMV later. So there it is. You can just add a quick banner. That way they don't have to go piling through content to try and find it. You can meet, meet, meet people searching where you wanted to. Um, like I said, we're mobile friendly. Uh, kick off, property search. This is our heavy hitter on the website. So people can, this is an example of one of the apps where people, uh, it sits on apps.larimer.org. It feeds the data to the cloud and we can, you know, we can get content right there. 
So we get tax history for different properties. And all this is taking place on via in Drupal, but it's being hosted in a little Angular app that's put together. We push all the content up through Git, and we go development, test, production, just like you would any other. The I want to, if you were in the language class earlier, thinking through like how people really approach your site, like this is really citizen specific, I want to apply for a board and commission, or I want to check the status on a building permit, or the landfill, I want to find a department. There's a lot of uh, jail inmates, uh, number two on our hit list, so you got assessor, people go to the jail. So you can type in a last name and see somebody there. This will be in the next, this is a little plug for tomorrow, but I gotta wait for the, because the Wi-Fi is a little slow. But here's the current jail population. So we have real time, we tell the story, what's going on, bed count. We're always, summer months are tough, uh, into, or I guess into summer as well. Historical information. But these are all just little apps that are built. So the departments though, I'm on here right now as a sheriff editor. I can see my content. So there's some pages I've worked on. My department's content, so there's individual pages, I can edit them right away, see when they were last edited. There's banners that are shared across multiple pages, not for the sheriff, I guess. They do have contact blocks, though. So it tells you where the, where the content's used. So, and then we link them off to analytics. They can request an account if they don't have one yet. We have new editors come in quite a bit lately. And then we just have a lot of documentation. So that's the other piece I'd recommend, that if you're putting something online, you're expecting 70 people to use it, write it down, put it out there. Luckily, Ken Stockton, who works on our team, uh, he's really good at writing and really good at explaining things. So we would just go in and pour all this information into him and say, this is how it works. We're excited about it. And he would just take it, detail it very nicely, explain it in English so people could understand it. So if I go home, and I'll go to the sheriff's page. I think I have actually a link on there. So let's say, I don't want to mess with their pages. He might, they have guns. I don't want to. <laughs> so when they're adding content, one of the things we thought through as well when uh, we're putting this together, <clears throat> the we had a consultant doing branding with us, and at the same time they were just doing some like, here's a PDF of what your website could look like. And here are 16 different templates that we wanna like allow people to use. But and when we took those 16 templates around, people couldn't decide on which one they wanted. They wanted bits and pieces of each template. Like I wanna turn this on or off or add a banner, or I wanna have content here, or I wanna do this, this navigation. So instead of doing templates, like picking from a template, we let you have a basic page. It starts with a title, like here is a test. And let me just make sure that I'm doing this before we do it. Unpublished. Oh, tester, misspelled. But it's unpublished, haha, <laughs> so no one will see it. Um, and there's certain little pieces that we've added, like you saw the sheriff's badge shows up if you're part of the sheriff's team. Um, we used taxonomy within Drupal um, for permissions, so we can have different editor roles. So right now I'm logged in as a sheriff editor, I only see my content. So if I add a page, I'm adding it to the sheriff's uh, level of content. So I can add that, there's no, like I said, there's no saved departments, banners, but I can create one. So we can say here is a banner, or Nagua rules, and then I'm gonna get a call, and we can put a URL to it, or we just, we use Font Awesome for the icons. Thumbs up. 
We, uh, we try to restrict. One of the things that came up in what you see is what you get is really limiting people to what they have access to. So we ask them for information like, well, what color do you want? And then we control it. It's tied to our branding colors. So this is an example of where they wanted to add a color after we'd already got the approval for the branding. So when, again, the sheriff asks you and with all, you know, the jail and everything behind them, they said, we really need a new color. And we were bringing them in um, from outside the county. We had Larimer.org for a long time and Larimer Sheriff. And Al was there at the time when it was definitely a separate website. So when we were launching, we said, hey, do you want to combine forces? So it, that was, it took a while to, to get to that point, but just giving them Larimer or Enforcement Blue, which is what we call it, is a banner. So Nagua rules, here's a banner. So I'll just really quickly breeze through. We've got navigation. You can add multiple nav blocks. We let people choose. Again, it's standardized. So we'll let them choose different um, navigation styles because they mesh with what we're branding, mess with how we people use the site. So when you jump from one page to the next, there's no like disconnect. It looks like you're on the same site, but we give them some customization. We have a separate content type for our news articles. So on any given page, they can like list their news articles. And I think it was on the front page. I didn't get down there. But if I scroll down, you'll see what our spotlights look like. So Larimer County acquires 800 acre private inholding. We're gonna do some more natural resources. Courtesy tags for uh, notices for mobile homes. And of course, we always have the sheriff with their interesting news posts merges together. And then we have upcoming events. And of course, we, we keep up like an, a near you thing. So it lets you know where the offices are. We change these out periodically with natural resources. A lot of times we have some standard um, buildings on here, but we integrate with a lot of different pieces here. So we've got buildings in Fort Collins, Loveland, where we're at. Kind of get some information for each building. There's the ranch, our entertainment complex. So as an editor, I can add a page. I can add one of those spotlight articles. Uh, at an event, and we're just about to start, we're bringing our intranet to this site as well, because we can lock down people. Um, you can sign on, let me see if I'm there. We built a single sign-on engine that lets employees log in as well as, uh, in, as citizens. So if they click here and I log in, they're presented with the different ways how to do it. If I'm an employee, I can just click a button, and I'll usually, we use our single sign-on, which is Okta. I, I won't worry about logging in because I'm already sitting right over here. But uh, yeah, that's, what we did was we, we went through this exercise, made all these decisions, pieced it together, we're in the cloud, um, and that's kind of how we went. And each story, each adventure will be your own. Like if you guys are out there, some will say we're going to go with a vendor, but that's not the last decision because we also, you'll also need your email or your marketing or, or all the things that you have to do to build that citizen experience. So at this time, I think I'll just answer some, any questions that you guys have, and especially when it comes to what vendors we used or the hosting or anything you guys might have.